Good afternoon and welcome to another episode of Rocky Mountain Gamers. This week, I'm Babs. <laughs> and I'm Mark Cameron. Just because we wanted to be different. He didn't know I was going to do that, but you, you, you recovered well. All right. All right. I got it. <laughs> uh, not a lot going on this week. We're only actually like five days since we shot our last one. So we're trying to go earlier in the week. And we're still messing with our format a little. So uh, thank you for your patience. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Um, send us flowers. Do whatever you want. We would like you to uh, interact. Leave some notes below. Tell us that we're driving you crazy. Whatever. Um, but we're, we're trying to get some engagement up there. So let us know what you'd like to see. Uh, what you like that we're doing. And um, thanks for tuning in. We really appreciate it. This week, uh, we're going to go through our normal segments and do something a little different as well. So let us know if you like it. And as always, we're going to start off with L. Babbins, the intrepid game hunter, and see what he's up to. What are you up to this week, Babs? I don't know. I guess um, sort of the same old stuff in a sense. I'm still hunting PS5s and Series Xs um, stock not getting much better honestly we're still getting our monthly restocks at every retailer and then all of them happened last week and here we go again so now we probably have another three week gap before we start to see more of them so that's not improving which is unfortunate hopefully how about xbox series x it, you know what it's i want to say it's almost even harder to find a series x lately the the playstation 5 restocks have been light but consistent they basically happen once a month good to go series x has been occasionally happening once a month like eb games had a fairly decent restock last week um but microsoft uh, hasn't been great and what they've normally been doing is they they have a canada specific drop and a u.s specific drop and then a drop that includes both canada and the u.s um, this month, I only seen them do, um, basically U S and Canada at the same time. And when that happens, they sell out far more rapidly because there's far more people in the U S and they seem to share the stock. Um, so us here in Canada, we're waiting on the Canada specific, uh, series X drop from Microsoft and it hasn't happened. So it's funny because for a while there. Microsoft was right on top of things like it felt it was pretty simple to get a, a Series X for a while there. And now we're kind of back to where we were before, where it's not that easy anymore. So it's on par or worse than uh, PS5 at the moment. So hopefully that kind of picks up on a positive note. The uh, Nintendo Switch OLED uh, pre-orders have been pretty good in Canada. I've noticed they've they've sold out fairly quickly in the US um canada has been going strong now for seven days so basically in the course of a week you know a few places sold out uh, amazon stopped taking pre-orders and then came back and um, the source was originally doing only uh pre-orders in store for the white version they're now doing it online um if you want to switch oled this is probably the best time to get it it's it's pretty easy um we've seen this sort of thing before where pre-orders are really good and then it becomes really scarce later. So hard to say where that goes, but it makes my life a lot easier <laughs> when they're not, they're not terribly out of stock. I've been thinking about that. And I'm wondering, the rumors forever were a Switch Pro, a more advanced Switch, uh, you know, with the 4K and this and that. There's a chip shortage going on, mm -hmm. a notable chip shortage. And it makes me wonder... If the switch OLED wasn't ever the plan, I'm wondering if it was a plan to get this switch pro in people's hands and they're looking at their supply lines and they're looking at what's possible. And what was possible was to get these new screens and the docks with the ethernet ports, mm -hmm. but it wasn't possible to get the new chip set in any quantity that would be good for them. And it wasn't, you know, it wasn't possible uh, 
to produce that for this year. The plan was to have a new system out this year. Nintendo's very smart. And so they kind of went with what they had, which was a new screen available that offers some benefits there. And they just put it in the old system and kind of came up with the hybrid on the fly. Now, I have no evidence of this, and this is not a rumor. I'm not trying to start a rumor. This is my speculation. But a lot of people have asked, well, you know, what happened to these other features? And I'm wondering if that's not it. Um, There seems to be a good quantity of Switch OLEDs out there Mm -hmm. that are going to be available. Um, And I'm not wondering if that, that wasn't a strategic plan rather than produce this new system with a chip that would have been hard to get. I mean, that makes a lot of sense to me. Again, Nintendo bridging the time gap between when it'll be easy for them to produce enough of the new model, if that is a thing, um, to the masses, right? And so they, I don't think they want to find themselves in a, in a PS5 Series X position necessarily. Like they want people to be able to buy their new console. And so absolutely. Again, at least here in Canada, like props to Nintendo Canada for absolutely providing a great amount of Switch OLEDs. I feel like people who want one can get one. And that's a nice thing in a year or two that's been, you know, riddled with products that people want, but they can't buy. Well, and all the rumblings out there are the PS5, Xbox Series X, high-end graphic cards are going to remain scarce into early 2023 so we're talking almost another year and a half well again um i don't see it improving currently and i you know i'm very in tune with kind of trends and whatnot and if anything i would say it's it's getting worse as this year goes on um although it's slightly improved uh earlier on in the year after after the holidays the holidays were were really really bad Um, it improved slightly in the early parts of the year and now it feels like it's, it's falling back. And of course, when I see that (laughs) I start to get concerned for the holidays, right? Because last year it was really a lot of sad stories and, um, some tough times for people. So I'm really hoping that the very least, um, there's a little more stock to go around this year and people can get what they're looking for. Yeah, it's going to be tough. I think it's going to be real tough. Uh, yeah. I, I'm hoping that the scalpers get curbed a little bit, the bots that go out and buy on these drops so that real people can get them without paying exorbitant prices. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've noticed an uptick in, um, in bot activity for sure. Um, it's, becoming, it's becoming tougher. So again, I think... Uh, the bots are suddenly more interested in PS5s than they were earlier on in the year. And that makes it more difficult for me to do um, what I do. So just going to have to work a little harder and hopefully things fix themselves in a sense. Yeah, we can hope. Um, What are you seeing with uh, these Zelda Skyward Sword items, the Joy-Cons and the Amiibo? Uh, Have they kind of run out as well? So that was my experiment in a sense um and so when they first went up for pre-order they were incredibly scarce the pre-order numbers were just devastatingly low and so i was wondering if nintendo canada was being very cautious about how many they were going to allow for pre-order and then they would gauge that and come back with some more solid numbers uh at launch and it feels like they have done that so it feels like they're actually getting pretty close to the mark um, with stock and demand. So every, I mean, all the other retailers, Best Buy, Walmart, um, the source, they all had some, and you know, EB Games, they all had some pretty decent uh, restocks on launch day. They all sold out, of course. Um, everyone was waiting on Amazon. Amazon came through yesterday and as of right now, the Joy-Cons are actually still up. The Amiibo has sold out, but they lasted like almost 24 hours. Uh, so another giant restock. And I, they will sell out for sure. But to me, that's, that's a solid 
indication that Nintendo Canada has figured out uh, supply demand on their stuff. And so looking at the Metroid Dread um, pre-orders, they were again, even smaller than the, than the Zelda stuff, but it gives me hope that uh, there will be some pretty nice restocks again um, on launch day, just gauging. I, going by so. the Zelda. I still don't have my collector's edition or Amiibo order. <laughs> I know, and that makes me sad. I try to try to help you where I can there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you never let me down. They've gone so fast. Like the stock was unbelievably low. I don't even know yeah, how that to is say. crazy. Just completely out to lunch supply demand issue. So hopefully the restocks will be pretty good, like the Zelda ones. I have hope because this was kind of my test bench, and I feel like that's what they're gonna do again. So fingers crossed. Yeah, hopefully. Uh, definitely with the Amiibo, but hopefully with that special edition too. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Well, let's transition. We were, we've been talking about the PS5, so let's transition to some, some stuff in the news. And uh, while we're talking about the PS5 and its availability, they announced today that it has sold more than 10 million units worldwide mm -hmm. and is the fastest-selling PlayStation console ever. Yeah. Now imagine if they had had more stock. I wonder what those numbers would look like, honestly. Yeah, because I mean, they it, when you can't keep it in stock, it could go both ways. That's true. Uh, my dog agrees. <laughs> Getting some some agreement from the from the stands from the Absolutely. audience. Absolutely, my dog agrees. <laughs> if you look at the lower left hand corner of your screen, you'll probably see him go by. Mm -hmm. um, I see him. Uh, he's a camera hog. What can I say? <laughs> so with the PlayStation 5, anything that's readily available and people feel they have time to buy, sometimes they wait. Anything mm -hmm. that's scarce that people don't feel they have time to buy, it can raise demand. So it's so hard to say where sales would be if they were just readily available and on the shelf. Yeah, um, I mean, get that, that FOMO, right? The, the fear of missing out there. Right. And, uh, I, I honestly feel like it probably spurred uh, sales a bit. I, I, think I think so. Probably more sales than there would have been with more stock, potentially. It's, it's to me, the whole situation is very Emperor's New Clothes because there are not a ton of exclusive games. And we, mm -hmm. we've talked about this before for either this. Well, there's none for the Series X. Everything works on the Xbox One as well as the Series X. Um, and there's only a couple of games that are exclusive to PS5 that aren't on the PS4. Mm -hmm. You know, you got Ratchet and Clank and you have uh, Demon Souls. Um, you have Returnal. You know, there's there's a few and they're really good ones. Yeah, they're all good, actually. They're all really um, And I don't know that we're going to see that much of a change this year through the holidays. Uh, people are reticent to put out exclusives when stock is low. Not as reticent as they would be if there weren't 10 million units out there. But it's, it's going to be interesting to watch. Uh, the PS Plus games and the games with gold were just announced. Mm -hmm. And of course, they're all PS4 games and Xbox One games. I think, is Hunter's Arena Legends a PS5 game? Um, I don't think it's exclusive. I could be mistaken. I need to take a look at this now. I was Because the way that PS Plus has been going lately, um, they generally have one. Um, PS5 game. They do. And then, and then it can be enhanced for PS5. It's not necessarily PS5 exclusive. Right. And in this case, it does look like it's it's PS5 and PS4. It's yeah. the Hunter's Arena Legends there. And uh, the, the other games for PS Plus, Plants vs. Zombies Battle for Neighborville and Tennis World Tour 2. Not an outstanding PlayStation Plus month. No, I'm literally nothing there is intriguing to me at all. <laughs> um, 
you had Nintendo update their online offerings last week with three Super NES games that are so low profile. I don't even remember the names. <laughs> They're just, you know, and I know one is uh, uh, first time in the U.S., Two of them are puzzle games. It's just there was nothing exciting. There was nothing I have downloaded yet or started my Nintendo online service for yet to see if they're cool. And here's where Xbox comes in. And they actually have cool stuff. Yeah, they're basically all cool, in my opinion. I'm not familiar with Garo, Mark of the Wolves. So that's uh, that's a fighting game, and I think it's actually a it's a popular one. Um, I'm not familiar with it either, but I do know it has its it has its fans for sure. Um, and I do know it's uh, from what I've heard, it's a solid game. Um, it's yeah. unusual. Sorry, I, I was just gonna say that the games with gold this this month are are good, and it's been uh, it's been a few months since I could say that. That's true. Well, we have Darksiders 3, um, which I think is an underrated game. Yeah. People absolutely. really like the first two, and three didn't, I don't think, got the attention it deserved. It's a really good game. People should give that a try. We have Ukulele, which is, uh, for anybody unfamiliar with it, a bunch of old Rare employees, people who worked on Banjo-Kazooie, uh, and those... Um, got together and made a 3D platformer. There's also, they also made a 2D platformer, which is actually even better, <laughs> strangely. But Ukulele is a 3D platformer um, with cartoony characters in a cartoony world. It's going to seem very familiar from that standpoint, but that's a lot of fun. And then Lost Planet 3, which is a solid shooter. Mm -hmm. So, so that's, you know, that's just some good stuff. Uh, yeah, it, if you have Xbox Live Gold, if you have PlayStation Plus, uh, make sure you check out games. You never know when you're going to find something that you just really like. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it costs nothing if you're already a member to download something and play it for a half an hour and see if it, it looks like it's going to appeal to you. So I always encourage, encourage people, if there's the least amount of interest, check out these games. Yeah, you might find a hidden gem that you didn't know about, right? Absolutely. Um, other things going on in the news. Dr. Mario World is shutting down. Is anybody surprised? <laughs> um, Nintendo's online, their, their foray in mobile gaming, not online, but the, their foray into mobile gaming has been excessively mediocre. Yeah, it's a lot of, lot of hit and miss. Um, I've definitely enjoyed uh, Fire Emblem Heroes a fair bit, or at least when that I'm might be the better. best of them. It's pretty good. Um, I also do like the Animal Crossing um, Pocket Camp, which I was really into for a little while, and I just I just don't have time for um, phone games right now. See, I'm but, a massive Animal Crossing fan, and I just never liked it. Yeah, I mean, it's not it's not Animal. I guess if I'm going to spend 15, 20 minutes on Animal Crossing, I'd rather be playing New Horizons. Exactly. I guess that's just what it kind of comes down to. If you have the option to play either, you know, but it's not a bad game. Or my uh, favorite, New Leaf. Yeah. yeah. I will still put New Leaf against any other Animal Crossing game. Yeah, I mean, I, I, have, a soft spot. I have a soft spot for Wild World, but... Uh... I get that. I get that. <laughs> And well, the Mario I'll... game was was weak. Uh, there has been no Zelda offering. The only the only mobile games Nintendo uh, Nintendo related properties that have done really well are the Pokemon games. Yeah, I mean Pokemon Go continues to be out outstanding. Um, I still play almost every day in some way, shape. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, though. Yeah, no, it's it's actually really good. I think I'm up to my Pokedex is at. 564 or something wow. like that. Yeah, so, I mean, that's a lot of people play uh, Pokemon Go for different reasons. They like the rating or whatnot, oh, yeah. you know, or more powerful Pokemon, but I, I'm a collector, so I just want one of each. Well, that's excellent. 
So, um, so if, if people care, they're shutting down Dr. Mario world, um, get your last plays in, uh, of course you can always play Dr. Mario on the switch mm-hmm. and it's, uh, the same. So it's Dr. Mario. Mm-hmm. Um, there is a Pokemon live action show in development at Netflix, which mm-hmm. is weird. I have never thought about Pokemon. I mean, yeah, I mean, Detective Pikachu is a live action movie. So I thought of Pokemon live in that way, but I've never thought about a live Pokemon show that would be really Pokemon that would be maybe a real kid playing Ash or something. I, I mean, prior to uh, Detective Pikachu, I would have agreed with you. I would have said, no, this is going to be hard to do. It's just not <laughs> going to work out well. But after seeing Detective Pikachu, I think there's a possibility that it might actually be pretty good. Um, it could be. They can make the, the Pokemon pretty decent into the into the show, and uh, which would always be my concern is that it would basically look just not real or kind of fakeish or whatever. Um, but I think now after seeing that, I think they have a possibility of making it pretty good. So I'll be cautiously optimistic on this one that Netflix can do something with that, and hopefully they they give it the attention it deserves. Um, given how much Pokemon is making and how popular Pokemon is right now, I feel like they'll, they'll spend some money on it. Um, and if they spend some money on it, I have faith they can do something good with it. So, Well, they should spend some money. Pokemon is, uh, draws a big crowd no matter what. So It really does. If, if they make it good, it'll draw a big crowd. Absolutely. So, but yeah, I, that, that's, that's one I didn't see coming. Mm-hmm. Do we have anything else in the news this week? I don't think we do. Uh, the only other thing that I guess it's worth, um, well, I thought it was, it's interesting, at least here in Canada, is that uh, EB Games basically, or GameStop basically came out this morning and let everyone know that EB Games is rebranding as GameStop here in Canada. I and didn't, didn't, I, I uh, read over that on my note. And yeah, that is, is a big deal in Canada. It's a huge deal in Canada and it's made larger just because at some point um, they have tried to do this in the past. Where, well, they, they didn't try. They did this. They rebranded, um, you know, Electronics Boutique, EB Games as GameStop. And then they rebranded back to EB Games. And now they're rebranding again to GameStop. And uh, it's just a lot of back and forth. I mean, it, it costs money to do a large a scale lot of money like that. And there's 4,000 plus uh, retail uh, EB game stores in Canada. That is a lot of money to rebrand that. Um, and you're talking thousands per store to rebrand for new uh, signage, for new everything. Everything. Like they're going to have to redo the website. This morning it was, it was a complete mess. Um, they, they took down the EB games uh, Twitter account and accidentally put the wrong new Twitter account. <laughs> Someone stole that account and pretended to be them. And then they put up the right one. And then it was one that they'd had from the last time that they rebranded. And it was just kind of a mess. And um, I, again, I don't, nothing's happened on the website yet. It just feels like it was kind of just dropped on everyone with very little notice or anything. So Expect to see some rockiness in the next, um, I don't know, month, couple well, weeks. I, I like, don't understand. They're on, games, and they're on a tear. Yeah, EB Games is known in Canada, mm-hmm. has its following in Canada. Mm-hmm. I don't know what GameStop is going after here. Here is a company that has financial difficulties, and they're dropping tens of millions of dollars to try to assert themselves as a brand in Canada rather than just appreciating that they have a brand in Canada that's already decent. Yeah, and it's pretty typical. Um, A lot of, uh, I find that a lot of U.S. companies sometimes don't realize that uh, the Canadian uh, retail outlets are are different than the U.S. Um, I mean, even just look at things like Toys R Us. It, It went under 
in the, in the US and here in Canada, it's going strong and it's profitable. Um, again, same sort of deal, EB Games here in Canada, it, you know, it may not be in the strongest position, but from what I understand, it's doing okay, uh, at least compared to, to GameStop in the US. Um, Target tried to kind of move in and, and take over a lot of stuff and, you know, set themselves up against Walmart and everything. And it, it failed miserably. Like it's, it's just, it, it is a different market and they need to kind of understand that it is different. It's not the same thing uh, as the U as the U S retail market and they have to kind of treat it as such. So to see them sort of forcing the brand onto Canada is it's probably going to lose the money and brand identity. So not, not the, I, I don't completely understand what they're thinking with this move. I suppose they need to hire us, man. Yeah, man, we'll get right in. There. We Push. we will fix their problems and teach them how to do this right <laughs> for less money than their executives are making now. Yeah. Square. <laughs> for four million dollars one time fee, I will fix this for you before I retire. <laughs> Guaranteed. Well, guaranteed I'm going to retire if you give me that money. Yeah, the retirement will happen sooner than later. Absolutely. I will, I will do my best to fix your problem before I retire, but then you can reach me at 1-800-HE'S-AT-THE-BEACH. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the crazy thing is I don't think that EB Games had a humongous problem is, is kind of the thing. Like it was kind of doing what it's doing. And I mean, the website's... Um, has a few struggles for sure um but by and large they're i think they're doing a great job and so kind of to, to rebrand seems unnecessary I suppose. four thousand stores four thousand stores which is a lot of stores that's a ton of stores it's it, it blows my mind man yeah that you know four thousand stores you're probably talking Fifty million dollars. Yeah, I, I have no idea what that would cost, but just starting to think about all the things that need to change, you know, like, oh, oh my gosh, it just makes my head spin. It's a big job. Well, just in signage alone, those yeah. big signs they put outside of stores usually cost anywhere from three to five thousand dollars U.S. So three thousand yeah. dollars U.S. for four thousand stores. There's your first twelve million on signs yeah well i even uh, for whatever reason my mind went immediately to bags like the plastic <laughs> bags and they got to change them all from like eb games bags to gamestop bags and i'm like why <laughs> they <laughs> have to pay money to reprogram their register so when the receipts print they say yeah. gamestop absolutely Just things that, like that right? there's so many little things you don't think of with that um I in-store like, signage is huge. Not just the sign outside the store, but everything in the store that says GameStop uh, or that says EB Games. Go in and look. Go in and see how many times you see that name mentioned. Oh, yeah. They have EB Games exclusive um, copies of games sometimes. You know, they have, yeah, they got just, stickers. They got shelf talkers. They got... There's so much. Yeah, um, that's a tough... I wouldn't want to be in charge of, of doing the warehouse that. has boxes. Yeah, absolutely. Ton of stuff, ton of stuff. So good, good luck to EB games and GameStop. Um, you're making a very costly, uh, mistake, but that's our opinion. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm intrigued I'm to see, buy it. I'm intrigued to see how, how this goes. We'll provide an, I'll provide you a Canadian update, uh, on the, on the week to let you know how things are going. Excellent. Um, moving on a little bit, we promised a few weeks ago that we were going to talk about monitors and it's the only thing, uh, as long outstanding as my damn, uh, Shin Megami Tensei review. <laughs> I'm, I'm working to make that legendary, the promised review that never happens. I'm going to um, review that before you do. I think, I think you <laughs> might be able to, um, and it's your fault. Mm -hmm. Um, well, we'll get to that later. It's not your fault. I just have the attention span of an overripe grapefruit. Uh, we were going to tell people about some monitors that are coming out and uh, give our thoughts on monitors. And what kind of prompted that? There are some new 
Xbox branded monitors. Mm-hmm. Uh, coming, I don't know if any are available yet. I think um, they're looking late, late this year, I think. Is yeah, what. I think they're later this year. Uh, they're pricey. Very pricey. Um, particularly for the size they are. And what they're doing, they're, they're being optimized for the Series X. So optimized for 4K, optimized for 120 frames a second, um, optimized for HDR color. Sounds great. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's not overly different than what else is available, though, other than it has the Xbox seal of approval. And what seems like a high price tag to me. Um, and I'll, I'll put up some pictures of those monitors. Um, and got to thinking, what do gamers look for in a gaming monitor? Now, I am a tech geek. Uh, Babs over here, not as much. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you game on? Uh, so I'm on typically an 85 inch uh, high sense and I, I guess I'm I'm more into the big <laughs> as opposed to the um, you know super crystal sharp image and of course I, I do have um, this Asus um, monitor on my desk that I play sometimes on and it's it's sharp like if you're if you're playing on the monitor uh, I got the PS5 attached to it right now if I'm playing on the monitor it's sharp. It's clear. You could see everything. Um, my 85 inch also super sharp, super clear. Um, I guess for me, what happens is it becomes a little more focused on the monitor. Like you can see a little more minute details. Maybe that's partially due to being closer to the screen, but I like the big cinema approach where it's like, it's absolutely, huge. it's just an experience. And I feel like it's just all, I can take it all in. Um, and that probably has to do with my eyes getting older and whatnot too. I like <laughs> bigger and you, just sit closer to the monitor on your desk. You'll get the same experience. I, well, what's crazy <laughs> is that the font keeps getting smaller in these games, right? Which is oh. such, such an old person complaint, but it's a real complaint. And if it's on an 85 inch TV, I can read it very easily. So, <laughs> and, and trust me from across the room, I am feet away maybe i'm gonna guess 18 feet because it's a 20 couple foot room yeah i'm I'm about 18 feet away from my 55 inch right and you can't read that i'm i i'm always adjusting my glasses and squinting (laughs) and what the hell does that say and why is this font so small so yeah that that drives me nuts um but i go for the clarity I go for the, the best image possible, the deepest blacks. Uh, I yes. do a lot of movie watching as well. And I, I really like the clarity there too. I'm kind of a cinephile. And so I use an LG OLED. Mm. Um, what's nice about that, 4K, HDR, it uh, supports G-Sync and FreeSync uh, and variable frame rates up to 120 frames a second, up to 120 hertz, which is really nice with the new uh, game consoles that support up to 120 hertz. Absolutely. Um, On my desktop, I have two monitors. Uh, I have a monitor for when I stream and things that I'll play on, which goes up to 144 hertz. So handles 120 hertz, no problem. And has really, really dialed in color, dialed in picture for the HDR, handles 4K, just smooth, smooth. It's an Acer Predator monitor. Mm. And then next to it, I keep in uh, portrait mode uh, another monitor. They're both 27 inches. That's an Asus that is also 4K, but it's only a 60 hertz monitor. So it doesn't quite have that refresh rate. Right. And, uh, and, you know, people like to talk about these things. Oh, the refresh rate. Oh, oh, I got a 300 megahertz refresh rate. I have, I have this, I have that. Um, what does it mean? And what do you need as a gamer? And that's where, you know, I've looked at this from a tech standpoint. 
what do you need as a gamer is a monitor you enjoy. And if you enjoy looking at this on an 85 inch, so you can have a wall filled with game, that's all good. Um, I certainly can't knock that Hisense TV. Hisense, uh, Chinese TV company, and make some really nice product at an affordable price. I'm very happy with the picture quality and the, the prices to me coming from an age when I remember buying a, a 45 inch um, widescreen for like four or $5,000 when they exactly. went in. I'm watching an 85 inch that was something like $1,800. Um, to me, that just seems like an incredible deal. Um, how far things have come in that sense. And it, it, it is my last OLED. Uh, I'm, I'm stuck at 55 inches because of the furniture I have in my room. I'd like to go to 65. That'd be my ideal. But the 55 inch OLED only cost me 1500. Right. And that is for a top of the line quality, uh, on the picture and the color. Yeah. It's funny how the price of TVs, in my opinion, has continued to go downwards rapidly. Oh, now the so price much. of monitors is seems to be accelerating yes. with and spurred in my opinion by the next gen consoles actually and and that's where the trick is mm -hmm. you don't have to spend that much money um yeah if you want to hook your console to this uh acer predator monitor that was 700 dollars for a 27 inch monitor you can do that and the quality is going to be outstanding right or you can go up to a 55 65 inch oled set you can get a 65 inch uh a good oled for fifteen hundred dollars you can get top of the line for two grand or yeah. near top of the line for two grand until you start getting to the ones that fold up or retract or roll which there you're talking stupid money for, for features that, you know, if you want it, that's cool, but that's not going to affect the quality of your, your experience once it's unrolled. Mm -hmm. um, I will say, as somebody who plays a lot of games and a lot of different kinds of games, it is nice to have a better refresh rate. Uh, and by better, I mean 120 hertz. I don't mean 300 hertz or, or higher. It's nice to have 120 hertz refresh rate for shooters, mm. for really fast-paced action games. Um, are you going to notice the difference between 60 frames a second and 120 frames a second uh, in a shooter? Maybe if you're really good. I can't. But if you're really good, uh, as long as you have something that's handling 60 frames a second, for anything that's not a shooter, for an adventure game, for a role-playing game, for a platforming game, for a puzzle game, you're get you're gonna max out your quality. Right. Um, we talked about the uh, Steam Deck on mm -hmm. our last program, and people are like, "Well, it's not doesn't seem that powerful. How how can it handle these games? Well, it can handle those games because it has a seven. Well, it has an eight hundred p." screen basically a 720p screen uh it's a little bigger so it goes to 800p and you don't need the processing power for that as if you would going to 4k still looks great because it's a little screen and it's on your hands uh if you were to take that and plug that into a an hdtv at 720p it still look good it's not going to look like 4K. Right. Um, you need a lot of power to make 4K look good and a lot of screen behind it. So it just depends on the experience that you want. Um, HDR color is going to make more of a difference than resolution. People like to talk about the number of pixels. Well, you know, 4K on an 85-inch set you definitely want that because the set is huge. 4K on a 27-inch monitor, to be absolutely honest, you can't tell the difference between 4K 
and 1080p unless you're sitting right on a 27 inch monitor right but you can tell the color difference so look at those things just you know try to discover what's important to you as a gamer is it you only play shooters and you want something really fast do you want real deep deep dark blacks because you like to play horror games and that way you have you know just the maximum contrast um are you a mario fan and you want uh colors to pop you just want the poppinest colors possible for the for the anime style games or the uh cartoony platform games you play and you know look for uh a set that does that but don't Look at something because it's coming out and it's branded. And I'm not saying these Xbox monitors uh, or Xbox certified or however they're doing it are going to be bad. They'll probably be very good monitors, but you might be able to get the same thing cheaper without the Xbox name on it. That makes sense, yeah. Um, If anybody has any tech questions regarding monitors, leave us a comment below and we would be happy to answer it. For you um it's something that i'm extremely well versed on so uh ask away uh, and i will i will answer any question very cool i'm learning stuff right now too <laughs> <laughs> uh, last we will uh let's talk about what we're playing lee all right. um, we missed that last week, not because we didn't shoot that segment, but because the internet decided to burp and I had to cut that segment out, um, yeah. which isn't necessarily for the worst because it's only been a few days and I think we're mostly playing the same stuff. Yeah, I was going to say it's pretty much the same. <laughs> what, are you, what, what are you playing? What has your attention right now? So again, um, I don't know if I've discussed this yet or not, but I'm on to Shin Megami Tensei 3. And, uh, and I can't put it down because I feel like if I put it down, when I go back to it, I'll never be able to figure out where I was or what I was doing or, you know, it's, it's still got kind of that old school vibe to it that if you're not really paying attention, you know, there's no summary, there's nothing telling you where you're supposed to be going or, you know, what you need to grind or whatever. So I'm not, I put it down for four or five days because i was watching a bunch of anime with the kids um <laughs> i went to pick it back up again yesterday and uh and even then you know like it's only been four or five days it, it took me a, a few minutes at least to kind of get my bearings and you know are my guys all healed like getting ready to go again and uh so this one's a really i gotta play this one really carefully to finish it through and it's really hard because I have a copy of Skyward Sword sitting here that I wanted to play forever. Um, my kids are playing Monster Hunter Stories 2 um, and they just keep telling me how amazing it is. I just I have so much I want to play right now. It's all stuff that I have to play and I'm, I'm backlogging stuff now that I have to play. And it's just I don't know what I'm going to do. Need to need to retire and just play games. <laughs> Again, somebody please sponsor uh, Babs and I to play games, please. Uh, I, I accept a check, credit card, Venmo, Bitcoin. I'll accept anything. Uh, you will too, right, Babs? I'll take what I can get for if sure. They want to sponsor us. <laughs> um, I so still have to finish. Uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake Intergrade. I'm still not done there. I am on the extra content. I'm on the intermission content, but I'm not done. And the reason I haven't finished it is so lame, but the Olympics have come on. <laughs> and I keep my TV on the Olympics because I am a huge fan of the Olympics and the, the competition and, and all of the, you know, the sports you only really get to see once every four years i can turn on basketball anytime but how often do you get to see swimming or uh you know dressage i i i do i do appreciate dressage <laughs> um and anything else they throw at me so i've been playing the handhelds more and on the switch i've switched over to uh skyward sword no and which is wonderful 
Skyward yeah. Swords just it's such a good game. It's such an underrated game. Uh no, I am not doing it with motion controls. I'm doing it with the stick controls and I think they work great. Some that, people are finding them awkward. I think they feel very natural. I have no problem with them at all. That's such good news. And and then today the Final Fantasy Pixel Remasters hit and I I started playing with with one. I think I need to just leave it alone until I finish a couple of these games. Um, of course, the couple I'm talking about are Final Fantasy, at least Final Fantasy VII and Shin Megami Tensei, which I am right at the end of the game, and I'm just not enjoying the grind. Yes. I just need to grind more in order to beat the last boss, or the last however many you know, versions of the boss there are. Yes. I don't remember, but I'm on Beelzebub. So I think I'm near the end. And uh, I don't know. It's just, it's, it's, it's dragging me down a little bit. I got to admit. It's a grindy game. There's several points where you, you have to grind to get past. It's some true. Ridiculous boss. And yeah, it's, it's required in this game. I think. Atlas balances stuff so much better now. Do they ever? Games in general, it's incredible. It's true. I, I had to not, I didn't have to grind at all in uh, Persona 5. No. No. Everything, everything stayed where it should be. Yep. And I love that so much. Me too. There's no, no wasted time. You feel like the game really um, values your time, right? It's true. Now, I didn't have to grind, but I still managed to play that game uh, Royal for... Uh, 237 hours yeah persona 5 will do that too <laughs> and but you don't feel like it wastes any of your time it's so quality you know oh it is so i think that'll do it for us this week um again please if this is your first time hit subscribe hit that like button and let us know what you think let us know uh what we can do uh better what we're doing well and uh, what you, just what you think of the podcast. Um, we don't have a plan for next week right now. We don't have a subject. So any suggestions, you can put those in there too. But until next week, I'm Mark Cameron. And I'm Al Bevins. And we really appreciate you tuning in. Thanks and have a great week. Take care.